You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Welcome, everyone, to a freaking fantastic <laughs> episode of Ask Drone You. It's actually a very toned down intro to the one I just recorded, but Rob said there was absolutely no way that we could play that because it's how you start and end a show in four words. Start and end a show forever. Oh, forever. Right. Oh, those are some powerful know, maybe, words. Maybe not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, welcome. Episode 812. 812. You use your imagination on what he was talking about as far as the uh, faux beginning to the show. <laughs> Tamed it down a little bit, but we're glad that you are with us. Um, yeah, always really appreciate that you take a few minutes of your day to hang with us and hopefully you get a little entertainment. Hopefully you learn a lot or at least a little. And uh, if you have questions, because we know you do, like we like to say, if you've got the question, so do a lot of other people. Keep that in mind. Be the one that's bold enough to get your voice on here. We love to hear from you. Feel free to use an accent. You don't have to, but we love hearing from you that do. Even if it's a real accent. Well, especially if it's a real accent, we like that too. Now I'm rambling. Ramble, What's ramble. Going on? <laughs> ramble, ramble. I was just checking Instagram, see yeah. what was good as I was dreaming about my new skateboard. It's your new skateboard in. and yeah. your uh, notification that you're off to uh, Hawaii here. The land of the lava. Technically, we are, we are in Hawaii yes. right now. We're yes. coming to you from Hawaii. Yes, indeed. So put your minds if in only. Hawaii. Think of a smooth sea breeze, sunset eclipsing over the horizon, waves crashing at your feet. Dolphins and mermaids singing off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> mermaids, that's cool. That's a special place you're going. All right, let's play this question. I need to go to this special place. <laughs> hey, what's up, Paul and Rob? My name is Derek. Uh, I'm in Southwest Florida, and I recently uh, joined Drone U. I'm looking forward to taking a bunch of the online courses, but uh, in the meantime, I'm proud to admit that I've looked through about 700 and some uh, podcasts and I've listened to a bunch and I'm really curious uh, about something you guys have perhaps covered, but maybe not in great depth. And that is what type of conditions or window of opportunity are you looking for when you go out to do a mapping mission? Um, being that I'm in Southwest Florida, we got a lot of nice, uh, sunny, bright weather, but that also casts a lot of uh, serious shadows on the ground and uh, is potentially an obstacle uh, related to UV and uh, perhaps uh, solar radiation, some of the stuff I've heard uh, Paul talk about before. So if you guys could elaborate a little bit on what are the things um, – most ideal that you look for when getting out to go do a mapping mission? Thanks. Great question. Insightful question. Very, very, very because good Because it question. does make a big difference. It sure does. So what's the best type of weather for aerial photography? For aerial photography, photography. versus... So not mapping. Not mapping. You kind of go into a different place here. Yeah, I am. Um, you threw me for a loop there. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Difficult question. So is it, is it different for mapping? Yes. So then it would be a nice sunny day? That's right. Had a baby. Had <laughs> a <Atta> baby. <laughs> uh, and okay, so now for photogrammetry, what's the best type of weather? For photogrammetry, it's mm -hmm. definitely an overcast day because Boom, you're, baby. you're eliminating the shadows that he alluded to, right? That's one reason anyways. Atta there may maybe. be others. There may be others. Because he's looking for all kinds of tips and tricks that you can give him oh, that I are going to make this I know. Better. I just uh, wanted to see what you got for him. Whew. You did a good job. Thank you. I'm proud. <laughs> I'm very proud. <laughs> Let's go fly. Okay. So tips and tricks here. Um, number one, uh, overcast day is definitely the best uh, type of day to do it. So if it looks like it's about to rain and there's like a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind, perfect. Literally perfect. That's what, that's what we want. We also want to try to fly around the middle of the day because if there are any shadows, they'll be minimized. That also helps. KP index definitely has to be low. Um, you can use the Kitty Hawk application uh, to find KP index. There's a lot of other apps that use uh, or that you can find KP index. Um, Hover is one of those apps. I stopped using Hover, though, because they have a certain uh, map curator 
utilizing their maps, which by the way, I just realized, and, and this was on Facebook the other day, there's this guy saying you can't fly in any of San Diego. And I'm like looking at the sectional map and I'm like, yes, you can. You totally can fly on right here. Mm-hmm. You go, well, I don't know where. You got to show me where. It's like, no, you have to be educated. Like, you have to know where you can fly and where you can't fly because oftentimes these maps are wrong. These yeah. UAS FM maps are wrong. It's like, that's not controlled airspace. I'm going to fly there. Like, this, you're wrong. And you if you're wrong. the one that's educated and does know, then you have the upper hand. True. Right? And I've had In to educate the police before. I've literally been like, ma'am, can you please show me where you learn to read a sectional map? Do you know what a sectional map is? <laughs> That never helps when you're uh, asking a police officer that. I, yeah. It was the wrong route to go, but right. I definitely went that route one time, and I learned that was the wrong route to go. Good. You want to anyway, you want to build them up, not tear them down. That's true. Anyway, right. there are often times where you're going to be in areas. I don't know why I went down that that rabbit hole. There are areas where flying is going to be difficult, depending on the type of day, or depending on the airspace, or depending on the wind. So you want to make sure KP index is good. You want to make sure it's overcast for the best data, especially with buildings with complex features and structures, especially with buildings that have a lot of glass, especially with buildings that have a lot of reflective material like the Balloon mm-hmm. Fiesta Museum. It's mm-hmm. a perfect example. Any time that you can limit the reflectivity from those um, objects, it's really going to help in your maps. So when it's sunny out, you're, the pressure's on a little bit more because mm-hmm. you've got to do it in a pretty small window so those shadows don't change on you, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. So you just have a lot more. It's kind of a little freer. As you can stressful. see, there's a lot of information about mapping. Yeah. There's a lot. These are just a couple of the idiosyncrasies. Mm-hmm. And there's hundreds of them. So yeah. anyway, I think that answers his question, and uh, I think that's going to do it for us today. If you want to check out our mapping class, learn all this stuff, it's uh, free to members. If you want to become a member, just go to droneu.education, become a member today. Uh, just to learn to map is going to be worth it. And our cell phone tower mapping class is now live. Stoked about that. Yep. Uh, when I come back from Hawaii, I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, mapping updates, little little things about cleaning up point clouds and doing these other things to make them look better and how to make a 3D printed model from your point cloud, just kind of things that people would really like to know. Going so, a little deeper into Pix4D? Going deeper into Pix4D. And then I also want to build the ultimate mapping drone. So like what nice. if you're really doing this for like work every single day? What's, you know, what's a really big bird that can provide a lot of data, very few number of images processed quickly? Mm. So that's, like that. that's when we're going to be buying the uh, M600 there, Rob. So oh. pull the checkbook out. Okay, so <laughs> please join. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, that is going to do it for us today. Thanks again for watching. My name is Pablo. And my name is Roberto. Muchas gracias. Hasta mañana con Nuevo México. <laughs>